I've come up with a phrase I use when something has been altered to fit the theme or style of Eternal, and that is eternalizing. Dawn of War 2 is a fantastic game stylistically, and a lot has been altered, sometimes seemingly for no reason. I mean, why? Normally I hate when a game changes stuff just for the sake of breaking up a meta or making it look different, with perhaps the biggest defender being a game like Overwatch 2. And there go most of the 40k fans viewing this. Anyway, this will give me a chance to go over some more aspects of Eternal that are different, especially considering it's taking way longer than anticipated to get a public release out. We're moving though. Last video we were on version 0.3.2 something, and we're now on version 4.3, or 0.4.3 internally. 0.5 will mean that the Eldar are near final, and at that point, we will make it public. Also, the other interesting fact is that when the Eldar are finished, that means that we're going to have... Warp Spotters! <laughs> Look, you knew what you were signing up for when you came to me for a Dawn of War 2 mod. And I assure you it only gets worse from here. Anyway. The first thing that people will notice in Eternal that's been altered is, no doubt, the main menu. Which, admittedly, I wanted to make look a bit cleaner. But, I've actually been advised this appearance is cool, and to keep it like this. But what exactly was wrong with the old main menu? I actually find that this is the thing that, more than any other aspect of the mod, gives that first impression of, this is something different. You know immediately upon firing up Eternal that you are not running Vanilla Dawn of War 2, and you now know that you should be ready for anything. This is a menu that proudly says, I'm different, and some of that has actually meant the removal of buttons that aren't a part of Eternal. For example, when you hit play, you will only see an option for a private and skirmish, or a public multiplayer match. The last stand and campaign buttons are not present, and this is because they are not, at the moment, supported by Eternal. That isn't to say that down the road they won't be, but the point is that the buttons relating to these two things shouldn't even exist if they aren't a part of the mod. You could argue that leaving them in allows people to play them in a vanilla style without exiting Eternal as a mod, thus increasing the player count. But the thing is, I don't know what aspects may or may not be broken because so much of the game has changed, so this new main menu serves both as a stylistic interpretation, sets the precedent for the rest of the mod, and removes anything that may not work correctly all at once. Plus, I made a new menu theme. It also randomly selects from a list of other songs as well, so you get a nice little playlist of 40k tunes from various sources. This change in style also applies to the Army Painter and Hero selection, although the buttons have not yet been updated to reflect this, partially out of laziness and it generally being on the back burner to other more important features at the moment. The Army Painter will also now display all available units for the modded factions, so you will get an idea of what everything looks like before you actually head out into battle. This also leads to another stylistic change, and that is the appearance of units. Online level bonuses and chapter DLC editions have been entirely stripped out in favor of using their assets to provide a unified, clear look for units, as well as allow upgrades such as armor on tanks to visually appear in-game. An example of using online level equipment to unify units is the entirety of the Space Marine infantry lineup, which now use what previously were unlocked armor sets. These specific ones allow your paint to affect the shoulder pauldrons as well as the borders surrounding said pauldrons with different colors, rather than purely the pauldrons themselves. It also serves to provide a cleaner appearance to assault marines whose jump packs would previously clash with the visual hoses present on the chest piece of the armor. Another change on the subject of marines is the reduction in wear and tear and increase in visual paint, a change not everyone will be fond of and is at the moment a rather crude application on my end. While the worn-out, battle-damaged aesthetic is very cool, 
I prefer the infantry to appear more like models, and when you paint them in the army painter, they should more visually reflect that. This also makes your army stand out more on the field rather than it being a mix of washed out colors and bare metal. Similar changes have begun being applied to the Imperial Guard infantry, but not as drastic as marines yet, and are already present on the scout and armored sentinels as well. As Eternal is a mod, it would also be relatively easy to revert any of these changes if desired, as none of the original textures have been in any way modified and are still present in Eternal. Fonts have also been altered across the game, and this is not due to any fault of the original vanilla fonts, but a new, cleaner font does give the game a more modern appearance and aids in that unique feel. In the previous videos, the two fonts used were Big Noodle Tilting Oblique and Book Insanity Remake. The former is better known as the header font used in Overwatch, and the latter just looked cool and was recommended to me by a friend. As neither font was actually a royalty-free font, despite the fact that this mod doesn't really need to care about that kind of stuff, I still figured it would be good practice to alter them to something else. This would also make it easier down the road to import them into web pages. As such, the new fonts being used are the free Google fonts Syrah, specifically the extra condensed one, and PT Serif, the latter of which also served as one of the body fonts for Dawn of War 3. Syra has also been used to alter both my own text logo and our modding team's logo into something more legal appropriate, since both also previously used the paid Big Noodle Tilting font. Moving into the game itself, a number of changes have been made to the core systems of Dawn of War 2. The first and most noticeable is the maps. At the present, eight two-player maps and one free-for-all map from vanilla have been eternalized. These maps all contain additional requisition points and or moved points, altered atmospheric effects to reduce the visible fog and weather effects close to the camera, and the headquarters has typically either been pushed slightly back or changed in location entirely to better suit the mod. Areas around the headquarters have been completely cleared out and flattened to provide easier base building, and the turrets previously present next to the HQ itself are all pushed outward to provide defense across the entire base area without being blocked by structures. In addition to this, all eternalized maps have two variants marked E and ET, with the E maps having no beginning turrets at all and allowing for a classic start with nothing more than your HQ. The entire resource system of Dawn of War 2 has been altered to better suit these changes as well. HQs now produce considerably less requisition at 180 per minute rather than the vanilla 300. Buildable base power generators produce 10 power a minute each with a limit of 6 for your turtling needs. Requisition points have been changed from producing a maximum of 30 requisition to producing a maximum of 80, going up to 100 when secured. And power nodes have been increased from producing 5, 9.5, and 39.5 power in vanilla to producing 10, 20, and 80 power. This increases your reliance on points, and with the new structures, techs, and units, you will actually need all of these resources to properly play the game. Was there anything explicitly wrong with the vanilla system? Not necessarily. But it's been changed, and being a core component of Dawn of War 2, this will aid in giving Eternal a unique feel. The in-game user interface has a separated menu when you build stuff, rather than it being inside the UI itself, with the left-hand side being dedicated to units, and the right-hand side being dedicated to technologies. And units now have a more appropriate subtitle, rather than purely being listed as infantry or vehicles when selected which should aid new players who may not be familiar with 40k lore to better understand what they're currently using. Some of the in-game music has been changed. As I've mentioned on ModDB, I intend to have music packs allowing the use of vanilla music, Dawn of War 1 music, custom music, and I can even create packs with music from other sources entirely, and I intend to show players how to do this themselves down the road too. And then, of course, there's the overall scale of Eternal. It's bigger than vanilla, but smaller than a mod such as Vengeance of the Blood Ravens, landing firmly in the middle. Squads are a little bigger, units are a little punchier, and everything is a little faster in combat, despite the slower economic game. These changes are similar to my other mod, Dawn of War 3 Redux, and give the game a slightly more, for lack of a better term, Command & Conquer style feel, which personally I consider to be one of the greatest RTS series ever made, with one exception, obviously. <laughs> And that's pretty much it. That goes over most of the changes that have been changed simply to change them in Eternal. And with that, we will continue our development and I'm working towards 0.5 with the Eldar finished. And I will keep you posted. I will try not to wait two more months for another development video. Um, I wanted to do one once every two weeks, but here I am, two months later. And as soon as I say that, I also realize that, come to think of it, 
uh, two weeks from now, I'm going to be on a trip, which means I can't post one two weeks from now. So let's just let's just have them come out whenever and hopefully not two months. I'm hoping that in two months we'll actually have a public release. Anyway, regardless, I hope you have a great day, week, whatever amount of time it takes. And I will see you on the next video. Stay toasty, everyone.